Before we jump into today's paper, I just want to give a shout out to Machine Learning Street Talk, where every week we talk about current or big trends or topics in machine learning. The first discussion that we launched is actually on today's paper, The Enhanced Poet. So if you like the following video, you might want to jump over to Machine Learning Street Talk and check out our discussion about it. It's very interesting. All right, have fun. Hi there. What you're seeing here are many different environments from a single run of a system that's called the Enhanced Poet. Um, last time we've taken a look at a system called Poet and the Enhanced Poet is kind of an improvement um, over the original Poet, fixing some of its shortcomings. And you see here that the, si the agent is able to solve this very, very uh, diverse set of, of environments. And the notable thing is this is from a single run of this algorithm. So one run will produce all these different environments and will produce agents that are able to solve all the different environments um, at the same time in parallel. So it's a population-based method. If you haven't seen the video I did on Poet, I suggest you go and see that now. This is simply an enhancement to it and I expect people to know kind of what I'm talking about. All right, it's going to be a short video, but I think it is a good addendum to Poet. So it's the enhanced Poet open-ended reinforcement learning through unbounded invention of learning challenges and their solutions by Rui Wang, Joel Lehman, Aditya Wall, Jial Chi, Yulun Li, Jeff Kloon, and Kenneth O. Stanley. Um, so we'll jump right in. They make a number of improvements to the original Poet and... I simply want to discuss the most important ones. So, you know, they have a nice graphic down here of what happens in Poet. Poet builds up this tree of environments and to each environment, it has an agent that it trains to solve that environment at the same time. So at the same time, it will kind of start out here. It will generate offspring. It will gener continuously generate offspring and then it will also continuously train agents in each environment that it produced in order to solve that environment. And it keeps doing that while producing more and more offspring. And then once in a while, um, it does what is called a transfer. So that means that, for example, you see here, um, the offspring produced here from this environment, you, you kind of see that the lineage here kind of kind of uh, focuses on squiggly environments, right? You see that there's a bit of a squiggle here and a bit of a squiggle here. And then the offspring all of a sudden is a bit more smooth, but has this, this little step here. And then this offspring of this environment has this large step here. Now the agents that come from here have kind of been optimized to uh, solve the, the squiggliness problem. But here, over here, this lineage has specified or specialized more and more in kind of like these kind of large drops or steep hills. So the agent that was trained over here was found to be very effective in this environment and therefore can be transferred. So this kind of um, population branching out into the different trees and then transferring solutions between the parts of the trees that's what makes poet very very powerful um, mechanism to solve these these kind of tasks all right so how does this improve now the first thing that poet does is it generates these environments and it always wants to generate new environments so it always generates offspring to each environment so let's say we are here, it, gener it will generate offspring to each environment here, right? Uh, each that we have, let's see, we have only seen so far. And then it only picks the n most novel ones, the ones that are most novel, which is this, probably this. And then there are other criteria, namely that it can be solved by some agents, um, but it cannot be solved by others. So it's not too difficult, but also not too hard. But one of the aspects is it must be novel, right? So we're not seeing any here, which means that those weren't novel enough. 
how does it measure novel? In the original implementation of Poem, you had this environment generator, which was like a, a level generator, which made these gaps here and the stumps here. And you could specify, I believe, five numbers. So there was a five point scale in which you could specify how high the stumps were, right? You get this kind of pentagon here, how high the stumps were and how deep the gaps were and how rough the terrain was and the level generator would generate this level. And so you're basically your distance metric between environments was a vector of size five, right? This is environment one and you had environment two which if it's more, it has higher stumps, right? Then this particular number here maybe would be higher than this number here. So it was kind of limited <coughs> to taking the Euclidean distance between two environment encodings um, in order to measure the distance between environments. Uh, this is very, very domain specific. And the authors here argue what we should rather do um, is have a general environment agnostic distance me metric, right? So here is what they propose. They propose the following. Why don't we, if we have a new environment, right? Let's say we have a new environment. We measure all of the agents, the current agents and the ones we've already seen, right? We measure all the agents in our database on this new environment. That's this. And they come up with scores, right? Each of them gets a score. And then we, you know, clip and bound the score. So the max here is 300 and the minimum is 50. But in any case, we then rank them, right? So we evaluate them and then we rank them from best to worst. And then we normalize, which simply means that the best one gets a score of 0 0.5 and the worst one gets a score of negative <coughs> 0 0.5. And now this vector here, this is now used to compare environments. So if we have another environment, right, right um, here, we have E2, and that gets a different ordering, right? So maybe agent one is now the best, agent two is really bad, and so on, right? That gets a different ordering. Then the resulting vector here will be very, very different from, from this vector right here. And um, this is very agnostic. So no matter which environment it is, if the ordering of agents in it, the score they get, the order of it is the same, the environments aren't really different from each other, the authors argue. But if the scores are very differently ranked, right, so imagine the environment is harder, but essentially the same, then the, the scores will be lower, but still the agents would be ranked the same. Um, so you can argue, well, that's just kind of the same environment, it, but it's except a step like this, it now has a super steep step, right? It's not very different. Um, but if, you know, if, if instead of that, you get an environment that is like this, like you say, wow, that's qualitatively different. And you would expect from this one to this one that the agent's performance would roughly stay the same, but you would expect from the middle one to this one that uh, an entirely different set of agents might perform well, right, in this one. So that's how novelty is measured. And I think it's, <coughs> it's a pretty cool, cool way. I don't have coronavirus, by the way, maybe. Who knows? Ha. <laughs> um, no, I just have a dry throat. Um, all right. So this is the first enhancement they make, is that they now measure novelty in this domain agnostic way. Pretty cool so far. And what this allows them to do, this allows them to actually not rely on this level generator with the five, uh, with, you know, the five... Uh, parameters in order to generate these levels. But these levels can now be produced however they want with different generators, and that's exactly what they do. They now employ neural networks, not, well, it's, a, it's kind of a prototypical, it's, it's called a 
a CPNN that generates these things. You might have seen in the examples, the enhanced poet doesn't have these gaps and stumps anymore. It simply has these landscapes that are super diverse, but uh, they're still just their landscapes. Um, and what it does is it evolves neural networks at the same time as it evolves the population. It evolves these. So the architecture of these networks isn't fixed. It's actually evolving um, along with the agent to make the challenges harder and harder. So you see there are like cosines and sines in here and you can add them and subtract and so on. And that will give you a mapping from x, which is the x coordinate here, to y, which is the y coordinate, right? And that will give you kind of a continuous landscape depending on the architecture here and on the internal parameters, of course. I guess there would also be a node, some here like times a lambda factor. And then the lambda would also be a thing that is evolved. So pretty cool. Of course, the internals of this now aren't just described by a fixed vector anymore. But you don't need that anymore because we have a method to compare environments even if they come from completely different architectures of generators, right? So it's pretty cool that the, the agnostic comparison of environments allows you to now have a much more general level generator and of course now produce much more diverse environments. And that's what they exactly what they see. Of course, you see here the environments get super crazy. So they also um, propose kind of a novel metric to measure novelty. Uh, sorry, to measure progress. So the question is, how do we measure progress in these algorithms, in these open-ended algorithms? And what they propose is this annex score, which is I have to go and look it up. Um, the annex score, I think, is the number of new environments that are solved, right? Mm. Yes, so exactly. The question is whether a system continues to generate interesting new things. And the way they measure it is by the accumulated number of novel environments created and solved right so the the question here is accumulated that means over the entire run they count up how many environments that they've seen that are novel and we've already had the definition of novel and uh, in this case it basically means that it must pass the minimal criterion is neither too hard nor too easy. We've already seen this in how the offspring of environments is generated, right? There's a minimal criterion. And, um, and it must be eventually solved. So that means the novel envir environments created and solved, right? So how many new environments are created and then at a later point solved? And you can see the difference to the original poet in this graph. So the original poet eventually runs out of new environments because its generator is just not powerful enough. It can only modify these five variables and eventually the environments aren't m substantially novel from the old environments. Whereas the enhanced poet, you can see even after this run, and I'm sure they have large infrastructure to do these experiments, it just continues uh, to innovate new, more elaborate environments um, continuously. So um, this, I think, are the main the main things. They also do some improvement to the transfers and so on. I don't want to go into that. I just wanted to show these improvements so that you have the complete picture of how such an algorithm runs. My criticism to this is that if you just look at their their thing is that with the with the <laughs> the leaving out of the gaps and the stumps and so on. In a weird way, of course the levels are diverse, but they have become even more similar, it seems. Like you're really relying on the, uh, your ability to, to kind of continuously create these levels, kind of like a, a GAN for levels, right? And um, you're, you're relying on 
your ability to smoothly increase the difficulty of the levels, right? To, to actually have a diversity in your level generator, but also a kind of a smoothness with regard to the difficulty and um, in order to, to build this whole curriculum. And I think even though the environments look more diverse, um, it might be going into a direction where you kind of engineer yourself into a corner where you are now even more and more relying on these, I these evolving and parameterizable generators. Nonetheless, the ideas I think are pretty cool and that's all I have to say about it. Bye bye.